Hi there, Tony Sycamore here, Senior Market Analyst at IG in Australia. US equity markets fell on Friday night despite cooler PCE inflation data, which increases confidence that inflation is decelerating and that the Fed can potentially start easing rates as early as September. Friday night's price action capped off an impressive six months of 2020-24, the first half of 2020-24, with the Nasdaq gaining almost 17%, while the S&P gained almost 14.5%. This week, the key events for US equity markets will be a speech by Fed Chair Powell, the FOMC meeting minutes, is a manufacturing and services PMIs, and of course, the big one, which is that non-farm payrolls release on Friday night. Now, in the lead up to Friday's non-farm payrolls report, initial jobless claims recently hit a 10-month high of 243,000, while initial jobless claims rose last week to their highest level since November 2021. So we are seeing signs of cooling in the labour market. We do need to see more of that for inflation to ease and for the Fed to be able to cut interest rates. Let's take a look at the charts where they start this new week. All right, so what we're starting with is the S&P cash, the weekly chart. And as we've spoken about many times before, it has been following a nice uptrend. Recently ran into resistance from this uptrend uh, coming up here around 5,500. A marginal new high last week before closing back below this trend line resistance or just on it if you like. Uh, but what we do know is this is what we call a potential loss of momentum or reversal candle, and it also follows a second loss of momentum type candle. So we're on a bit of a red alert, if you like, for a potential pullback. Furthermore, we do have some bullish divergence here on the RSI indicator. Now, when I say a potential loss or a reversal candle, we're talking about it not actually playing out in a definitive sense. It's not 100% guaranteed, but it does warn us that a pullback could be looming. Now, where do we need to see this pullback start to fall below to confirm that it is turning into something more significant? Well, in the initial instance, I want to see it break below these lows of the last two weeks, which comes in around 5420-ish. Uh, as you can see on this daily chart, there's also a little gap below 5400 as well. So 5420 to 5400 will be support. If it were to break below there, I think you're looking for a pullback initially towards this March high at 52.64. Now, if for whatever reason, July is a strong month, we need to be aware of that from a seasonal perspective. If for whatever reason, the S&P just pushes straight on higher this week, then that potential loss of momentum candle is negated. And you would say that the uptrend has resumed. Now, for the NASDAQ, a similar candle formed last week, uh, a new high, marginal new high, and then closing on its lows. Again, one of those loss of momentum, potential reversal candles I just spoke about, and there is two in a row here as well. So if the NASDAQ were to break below support coming in around 19,400, I think that's probably a good sign we're going to pull back towards this uptrend support coming from the April low. So that, in the initial instance, is around 19,000. Uh, and if it were to start to accelerate, we'll work out our levels from there, the downside targets, but the big one, of course, would be the 200-day moving average, which is this orange line and uptrend support coming in around 17,000. I'm not sure it's going to get there. Uh, at this point in time, I'd be happy with a pullback towards 19,000. We'll work on those targets as and if it develops, but again, we need to be mindful that it needs to stay below these levels to give us confidence that something is starting to evolve to the downside. Thank you for listening and have a good week ahead. 